So welcome everybody. Um, today is July 27th, 2023. It's 6 p.m. start date. We're holding the meeting uh, of the Town of Deerfield Conservation Commission this evening remote on Zoom. Uh, certain meetings normally held at the uh, municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with House Bill Number 58 and the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGO Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31, 2025. So the remote meeting connections have been posted on the uh, town website, and looks like everybody pretty much has made it tonight. So that's good. Um, I did learn something the other day that I, I do have to tell everybody that uh, this meeting is being recorded. So you all know. <laughs> um, let's see. So we'll call the uh, meeting to order. Uh, at this point, um, the meeting guidelines um, for the town of Deerfield are speak one at a time, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, which is to be respectful, uh, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive. Uh, a couple of additional requests from myself is please request to speak to the chair um, when you want to uh, have something to say. And unless you're uh, doing some presentations, uh, let's keep our comments to the two or three minutes um, that anybody that's not on the commission are presenting. So that's great. So um, we'll identify the members present tonight um, and just do a, a roll call. So um, Kate. Kate Devlin here. Yeah, Ben. Ben Byrne, present. Sean. Ben Burns there. Sean Levy, you're on mute. You're good. I can see you doing that. Sean Levy, yeah, present. Yeah, and Mary, you're good. And Mary Flutie, you're present. All right, so we got a full, full commission night. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to be wobbling between two screens, so my head will be bopping around here. Um, so the first order of business tonight on the agenda is to review the minutes of our last meeting, which was June 22nd, 2023. It's on the, um, the meeting package. Did everybody receive it and have a chance to review it? And does anybody have any comments? Things that we have to revise, correct? Okay, I certainly don't. I read through it um, several times over the last week here and there. <clears throat> um, so a good go. So I would just uh, uh, take a motion to accept the, media, uh, the minutes of the meeting for 6-22-2023 um, as written. I move to accept the meeting minutes from 62223 uh, as written. Ben Byrne, no second. Okay, we got a motion on the table. It's been uh, made and seconded. Any other comments from the commissioners? Not going to do a quick roll call to accept. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, aye. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Yeah, Pete Law, aye. So motion carried 5-0. So we're good to go. Uh, we do have a couple of things. And I can pull up my screen here. Let me see um, as we go through here. Uh, let's see, where am I at? I too many screens going on. All right, can you guys, what screen can you see? The forest cutting plan? Yeah. Okay, yep. good. <laughs> I picked the right screen. Okay, um, so this is part of old business. It's from Delta Sand and Gravel. We talked about this last week or last meeting. It's their cutting plan. It was uh, amended. Um, I don't know the date it was amended here, but- um, 626. Oh, thank you. And- um, I looked through it and it looks like the only amendment is a change and I couldn't quite figure it out of the location of the uh, stream crossing number six. That's and correct. I will uh, kind of defer to Sean, you're the expert on all this. Uh, 
Yeah, it says on the front page under service forester comments um, that Allison approved the amendment moving yeah. stream crossing six there yeah, right below a little bit further down. Um, yeah. Just downstream to avoid impact of a dysfunctional stone culvert on Rice and Sperry Road. So sort of routine. They just figured a better way to do it. And uh, they said, you know, they called her and they amended it. And it's good. Routine. Okay. Good. So I think this is just a a, a notice of the amendment. I don't think we have to make it. We just any, put it in a file. Yeah, just file. I don't think we have to do any anything further on that. So I just wanted to bring it up to everybody. Um, so the next item we have on the agenda is a request from SWCA uh, for certificate of compliance for DEP file number 142-0215, uh, which has to do with the Cumberland Farms. But I am just wondering if, let's see, is Kristen on the phone with us tonight from SWCA? Yeah, I um I sent her an email today uh, saying that the meeting was tonight and sending her the link and I got back um, out of office. Hmm. Um, was hoping that uh, she or somebody else would still be here, but uh, all right. There's another number on the on my list, uh, four one three two seven eight two three eight three not identified so i'm not sure if that was somebody on the um, representing cumberland farms or not but actually i was going to ask if they would mind switching it so that we could um, bring on emily wright from uh, the bement parking lot rda because i think that would be um a pretty uh quick conversation emily if i if i'm correct because we're we're just maybe looking at um Opening this hearing, which we'll open the hearing. I should do that first. We'll open the hearing on the RDA from a Met parking lot um, that we discussed earlier. It's up on uh, plans for zero Old Ferry Road property, uh, assessor's maps, uh, map 40, uh, lot 16. Um, and we've been in contact with Emily that um, I'm not quite sure you guys are ready to go and you may be looking for a continuation of the hearing. Is that correct? Um, it's our understanding based on based on our our email communication that this project would require a formal NOI submission and all of the more detailed documents that go along with that. Is that correct? I believe so. If anybody else can jump in from our conversation last time, but I believe it's because it's in the flood zone A or A one. And it's right in um, a number of wetlands. Um, I don't think we'd have to do the um, determination of applicability, so it'd probably go right into a NOI. Okay, if that's the case, um, we are likely not going to move forward with with the parking lot and submitting um, a formal NOI. I think the school will work to figure out some sort of um, temporary measures in the parking location that they have now to make things more safe for pedestrians. Okay, so um, do you then wish to um, remove or suspend the RDA and come back to us um, with a new application or you know, if there's work to be done there of altering the, the, the land or anything of that nature, it would require, um, you know, review and um, comment and approval by the Conservation Commission, just where it's located. So how would you like to proceed? Um, we, we would like to, um, I guess, remove our RDA from your review. Um, okay. We don't anticipate... Uh, we anticipate any any temporary parking to be um, to remain temporary, and no permanent structures are changing to the surface of, of any kind. We're really talking about um, adding some traffic zones so that people um, don't back into Old Ferry Road, essentially. Okay. Well, um, 
Pete, I'm wondering, you know, if it, the point of an RDA is to determine if it needs an NOI, do we want to just close it out saying that, yes, it would need an NOI? I think we would close out the RDA with the uh, determination. And I don't have that form right in front of me. Um, I actually do. Where do uh, I think I have it? So a positive. Yeah, let's see. Uh, or is described in the reference plan subject to protection under the act removing dredging or altering the area requires the filing of a notice of intent that's a number one finding um yeah so i think we'd have to to do that and just to notify um the applicant in in writing that that's what we determine um during discussions over the last couple of months so it would um dictate an NOI, but um, if you're not going ahead with it, then you wouldn't have to submit it. But if you do, then we would be looking for an NOI. Yeah, we understand. Understood. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, you may think that makes total sense. So I would then take a motion to, let's see. Um, do the determination on on the RDA that the uh, NOI is um, applicable and would be required to move forward with the project. And um, we'd, we'd fill out the appropriate form. I, I forget the number. Is that number? It's not number five, as I forget. Three? Um, yeah, I think it's form three. Uh, or no, three. it's form two. That's the one I have in front of 2B. me. Two B. Okay. Yeah. The determination would be um, a positive B1, positive determination. Positive B1, yep, okay. Yeah. So it's a little unclear, but can somebody uh, dig out a uh, potential motion on that? <laughs> um, quick question, do we have to close the hearing first before we do the motion on the RDA or? Just yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right to close before you vote. Okay. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> I've had a long week. I can't keep up with everything going on these days. Um, it's okay. I would take a motion then to close out um, the hearing, and then we'll move to... Uh... So, Kate Devlin, I, I would like to make a motion to close the hearing on the RDA Bement parking lot. Um, I second that. Anne Mary Cloutier, I second that. Okay. Motion on the table and seconded to close out the um, the hearing on the RDA. Uh, any other discussion? Take a quick roll call. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, aye. And Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law, aye. So that does that. We'll close that out and then we will. Um, uh, Emily, we would just get um, form two filled out that it would and um, file that, and so you'd be able to get that information, so you know what's going. If you do, if you ever want to do th anything in the future, that would be covered there. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you, and good luck with it. <laughs> Wait, thank don't you. we have I, do we, don't yeah. we have to make a motion to? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you have to vote on the determination. <laughs> we have to vote on the determination, Pete. Before it's done <laughs> and dusted. Why would we have to do that? Because it's closed out and then we would just put in the. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my other screen to the size here and I can't see anything right now. So, I, so I, I, we have to add. Do, don't the, we? Oh, I'm, that maybe I'm, I don't. Yeah. I believe the rules are you have to close the hearing and then make your vote. So now the hearing is closed. So now. Um, if someone wants to make the um, motion. Okay. Uh, so, so Kate Devlin, I'd like to make a motion that we um, make a positive one determination on the RDA for the Bement parking lot, indicating that 
if any further work is to be done, it uh, an NOI needs to be submitted. And do we have a second? Ben Byrne, I'll second. Okay, motion on the table to um, add that. Any other comments? See, done, then we'll take a roll call to accept the motion on the table. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Uh, Ann Mary. Ann Mary Cloutier, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. Okay, got that one set. Um, and before we go on to the next one, anybody, can anybody tell me how I can expand my view here and zoom? <laughs> I got this little block in the corner and I can't get it big if anymore. Stop, if you stop sharing your screen, it might get bigger. Well, I can't even pick up that anymore. It's gone. Yeah, I don't have... I can't find all the uh, show small speakers. So then I can't get Try rid hitting of... your escape button. Yeah. Try hitting escape. Nothing. So I have no controls on this now. So you may have to look at my screen for the rest of the week. Um... <laughs> Can you go down to Zoom and hover over it? Because it seems like you might, like on the bottom taskbar. Go to Zoom and hover over it and see what that tells you. Yeah, I tried that. Uh, da, da, da. You click on the one to the right. Isn't that you? Yeah. Yeah. And it just, I can't get it to. What if you hit the little X? Leave meeting. Oh. Well, that would clear it. And then you could drop it. Come on. <laughs> Wow, I've never had this happen before. Um, maybe the host can stop sharing. Amy, are you the host for the meeting? The host tends to have more control than anybody. There you go. Yeah. Okay, I got it over here now. Okay. Um And now to share screen, leave meeting. <laughs> I still can't get out of sharing the screen. But uh, we're not seeing it. You're not seeing it now. Okay. No. Wow. I tell you, uh, me and technology do not go hand in hand. <laughs> okay. So you're not seeing any of my screens. Okay. Then you'll, I'm going to not leave the meeting. Um, then we'll have to, uh, you guys got all the meeting notes. So, um, Hopefully you can kind of read through it. Um, so is anyone on from SWCA? I don't see anybody at all. Well, yeah, I mean, I kind of trust people to show up. Um, like I said, I did send a link today just to be sure. And there you go. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure it's totally necessary, but I wanted to uh, run a few things by Kristen from SW, SWCA. Sean and I were out there on the 21st, I believe, um, looking at the site just to give you some information that I wanted to share with you guys. So this is a close out for DP file number 142-0215. Uh, it's a, looking for the certificate of completion. Um, there's also an open file number 1420208, which has been partially completed, uh, but it's a little unclear. I was going back and forth with Mark Stinson today of just what the former commission did to um, say it was partially complete. Um, so anyways, I think with the file 0215, which has to do with the um, the bridge coming in on five and 10 that they put in. And there was a, a reclamation area that was just north of it um, that they had to monitor for several years and send us reports. 
um, which ended a few years ago. Uh, we just brought this back up to try to close out this um, the certificate. Um, everything in there was, from what I saw, Sean, you can jump in, but seems to be met the order of conditions for 215. Um, the planting was well over 75 or 80 um, percent. You know, everything that was in there in our um, conditions seemed to have been met. So I don't have too much problem with file 1420215. We can talk about it in a bit. But the only thing I was going to try to request to Kristen from SWCA is a an ongoing uh, invasive species plan, uh, removal plan. We know, we did note uh, knotweed and uh, loose strife, uh, purple loose strife in the area. And I think this would be our opportunity uh, while we are, could complete some of that certificate um, to ask for a um, ongoing invasive species um, plan. There is at the bottom of her letter to us, she does ask we request the commission consider non-expiring conditions related to invasive species control and the long-term operation management. Um, and that goes into her sentence and the repair of the stormwater management system, um, which is a little bit tricky in the letter because the stormwater management system is under the other file number, 0208. Um, so I'm not sure we wanted to really drop the ongoing as needed um, invasive species control and or any long-term operations. I think we can accept what's in 215, um, but I want to figure out a way, and I was going back and forth with uh, Mark Stinson today a little bit, do I add it on to 2015 or if 208 is still open, can we utilize that? His advice was more to go back to you know, 208 um, to see what we want, but I don't think that's clear. Because I think, and I'm sorry to be all over the place, uh, but there's two of them. I think the 215, which we're talking about um, um, doing the certificate of compliance, they're pretty close, but I want, I, I think we want to talk about an ongoing um, invasive species plan and continuing of their O&M plan. On 208, that has to do with the stormwater management. Uh, on the site, and also the um, infiltration basin. Um, I don't know if it, you guys go into Cumberland Farms, if you drive into the front door facing it with the pumps behind you, the infiltration basin is to your right, to head of you to the, to the right and to the side. And you'll notice just a whole, uh, quite a forest of cattails in there right now, and a lot of standing water. And you, I don't think we right now we can actually see the, the I think there's two or three intake areas. Um, so this is a infiltration basin and I want to ask for their initial engineering plans because most infiltration basins are for an overflow and they should let the water settle out. Uh, the water has pretty much been upon there for quite some time. So I want to see if we could tie that in. And, and I did want to talk to SWCA tonight about that. Um, so two things, the invasive species in over by the, um, the bridge. And the second thing I want to go back and at least notify them that we would like to see some, um, something happen with the infiltration basin, you know, some ongoing maintenance, some upkeep, tell us what's going to go on. Um, I guess I'm, I haven't figured that out myself. Amy, maybe you can help, but the rest of you, if you have any comments, if anybody wants to know more about it, I can reach out to Kristen at SWCA and get her views. Um, we can pull up the other file because that's not closed out and complete. So that's still standing out there. It's an open order of conditions, which uh, we're past the date, so we can get back to them and say we want to close that out, but we have some concerns. So what well, what does everybody think? And kind of been rambling on on that. Sorry, there's just a lot of, a couple of different things going on at that site. 
Um, so Pete, I'm looking for, I may have the engineering plans from 208 on file. I think I um, have, I think she sent me the, uh, the, the build plans um, yeah. and a couple of reports afterwards. I think I have them, but if we could pull that together, Amy, because I think we're going to have okay. to have all that information at our fingertips so we can reach out to them again. Um, so, Pete, in one of the reports that was in our meeting packet, yeah. um, Sterling Stormwater Inspection Reports talks about yeah. uh, first defense systems. I think that is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, yep. And in the latest report, prior to he did they did one in february where they they couldn't do much um but on 11 5 2019 they made mention that um recommended maintenance actions include removal of sediment occluded mulch from downstream of the inlets and to the infiltration basin installation of fresh mulch as needed and repair of ruts in the infiltration basin as noted but what we don't get in future in following reports is whether anything like that has occurred right just recommended and i didn't think there was too many following reports was there after 2019 here no there right? was no yeah so there was one more kind in of... february of 2021 but they couldn't look at they couldn't address the infiltration basin because it was covered in snow right so they made statements that it should be repaired in 2019 but We've never seen anything since, is from what I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And back four or five years ago, it, it did look pretty good, but um, you know, driving there now, it's a uh, quite a different look. Okay. It sounds like we really need to have them at a meeting to talk it yeah. over. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, I agree, Kate. And I think I need to, because that's if that's under, I believe, Sean Kristen said that she was not involved in with SW um, CA company, so maybe Sterling is responsible for it. Right. But I didn't believe. Um, Cumberland Farms has another name uh, that they work under as well for environmental stuff. So, so I think the action items then would be we hold off on this um, on two zero one five. I'll contact Kristen just to talk to her direct. See what we can do there and um, Amy, I'll get, a, um, I'll put a letter together uh, to reach out to, I believe Sterling and, um, and or whatever Cumberland Farms. Isn't one of the name here someplace. Um, yeah, um, Sterling and Cumberland Farms on the um, infiltration basin. And in talking to <laughs> Mark today, he would be very happy if we did that because he's been after this for a while. <laughs> okay, so any other Are you looking to, to continue the 0215 to the next meeting? Um, well, it's not really, a hearing okay um it would no. be a request for the certificate of compliance to close out that compliant and so without some more of our questions asked i would suggest we would bring it Just up again it. next yeah. one yeah bring it back um and i'll let um christian know so a whole until august meeting um due to questions commission has something of that nature does that all make sense okay yep we're kind of 
we're kind of batting zero tonight and getting stuff done, but it's all right. Um, all right, that makes sense, Amy. Uh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I already made a note to um, okay. put it on the next agenda, and I will um, do my best to make sure that someone shows up. Yeah, and I'll read it. I have Christian. She sent me some uh, info on the side, and she's actually a commissioner in Greenfield. She just kind of knows her stuff, so she must have just been way late today. So, um, okay, yeah. Oh, Amy, I just appreciate it. I just want you to keep me out of jail. That'd be great. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. All right. Yeah. New business. And there's been a lot of new business. Um, I hope everybody, and I was at Sean's place last week, and there was a lot of water coming down through there, but I hope everybody else is staying high and dry. Um, the town is, uh, had a, has had a lot of storm damage over the last few weeks. Over the, yeah, it's hard to count there. One day there was two storm events, uh, maybe four or five storm events. Um, I was kind of adding it up with um, Chief, because he's the uh, Chief of Police. Uh, Pachorek is the, um, the emergency manager uh, of the district kind of thing. So we're kind of adding up to it. And, I don't know, we must have had like a couple feet of rain in, in different parts of Deerfield over the last two weeks. It's been crazy. Um, so I've been pretty busy with uh, with working with Chief, um, uh, with Kevin Scarborough from the DPW, um, working with Mark Stinson. He was up here for an afternoon, um, working with Mass DOT, um, working with some other groups here and there. Um, so I've done a, a number of site visits and spent a bunch of time out in the field. Um, most of the two days were on uh, July 21st and the 25th um, that we're out and about looking at areas. But I can tell you even, and that's with um, with um, John Pachorek and Kevin, but even we got more reports today of new damage stuff. So it just continues. Um, and then on what was several days ago, I guess on the 25th, yeah, uh, this week, uh, Mark Stinson was also came up to look at the area and I showed him a handful of different spots, uh, in town. And, um, you know, it was, um, he totally understood where we're at and what we need to do with, um, these emergency certificates. So what happens if it's in a wetland or under the um, Wetlands Protection Act, the, I can sign off as the chair of the Conservation Commission for emergency work. Emergency work in general, and there's certain exemptions for farmlands and stuff, but emergency work in general has to relay um, specifically to abating the emergency or relative to uh, public health and safety. So a lot of this time, this stuff comes into uh, public safety um, with road closures and road floodings and not being able, able to get um, emergency vehicles through, things of that nature. Um, so as of today, I met with John this morning um, on his spreadsheet he's had about 45 significant issues so far um, and a bunch more and um, there could be more coming through. So um, this is what just happened then today you know, over the last couple of days. So one mass DOT has been out on um, five and 10 and 116. Those are the highways that we're responsible for. Um, so a day or two ago, I got in a emergency request um, for signature for mass DOT that covered five. And, and if anybody wants to see these, I think uh, Amy can pull them up on the screen. I'm not going to do it because <laughs> I don't think my computer's working that well at the moment. Um, but mass DOT. <clears throat> 
I was looking at site locations, um, five site locations. One is uh, Route 116 on the Conway Deerfield Town Line. Uh, route two is Route five at uh, Wapping Road and Richardson Candy Store. Uh, we did the emergency there a couple years ago. And that one culvert that goes right under five and 10. But if you look at it now, a chunk of the road starting to fall in. Um, route five near Bement School, another road caved in over there. And another one on Route five, uh, a parcel a little bit north uh, near the Bement School as well. And then Route five at Keats Road across the street. So you might have been, I was caught in some of those diversions the other day and couldn't get around. Um, so they've been working at a lot of these places. Um, mainly it's severe flooding, erosion, uh, washouts, um, embankments, et cetera. Um, and they attach, you know, the work to be allowed. Um, so it'll be, you know, backfilling washed out embankments uh, along the north side, um, roadway repairs, uh, replace in, in kind of washed out riprap, any necessary repairs to guardrails, uh, hot mix asphalt, et cetera, for most of these locations. So they can they can do that without going beyond what was needed for um, emergency response. So does anybody want to see this document or read through it? Um, is we're, um, Amy, would you be able to pull those up if anybody wants to see it? Because this one I did sign off this morning and um, we have to go through. I don't even know if it's a, a motion, Amy, or just a ratification of the other uh, commission members that they agree. Yeah, I guess I would assume ratification would be yeah. a vote. Um, I did send out, I made um, single PDF documents of all the ones that uh, Chief Pachorek sent me. And I also sent the DOT one out before I left. So you guys okay. should have that in your email. I can also share if you want to look at it, but it's all, you know. No, did everybody get that then? I, I wasn't sure that you got mass DOT out, so that's great. Um, I can pick I up some of the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, I sent yeah I sent Mass DOT this morning, and then I sent the others this afternoon. Okay. So does anybody want to um, go through all the all the fine details of those? We can certainly pull them up. They all looked necessary on the ground. The ones you saw um yeah we'll go through some of the ones in, in just a minute from um from john but certainly the ones from mass dot it was pretty straightforward i wouldn't question it if mark stinson was involved anyway yeah and um he should have received this now and they can appeal it and, and add to it but um and did review it with john so i think the the mass dot one oh here it is Somebody's got it up. I don't know if you want to scroll through that. Who has that? Okay. And go down to about the third or fourth page. It's on the mass DOT headlines again. And those are the site locations. Attachment A, reasons for the emergencies. And then the next page is uh, the work to be allowed. And just to point out like, a little bit earlier, but under general conditions, um, there's a couple of them that, you know, number four is any work conducted beyond that described above and any work conducted beyond that necessary to abate the emergency so require the filing of a notice of intent. Um, number five, uh, agents of the Conservation Commission and the DEP shall have the right to enter and expect at any time and can require uh, additional data. And number seven is no work may be authorized beyond 30 days, um, the date of the certificate without written approval. And there's a start date on it. And um, the start date on this was uh, July 26th, yeah, today. So they have to end by 825. So that's the DOT one. And there's the maps in there to show you exactly where they were. Um, 
a number of them are right next to wetlands, um, et cetera. I don't think there was any um, um, heritage species, endangered species in the area on this one. Um, so, so this one I signed off today. Um, it's into the state, it's into DEP, uh, but as part of the uh, regulations, we would have to um, have to get uh, your all approval and ratification of um, accepting that uh, emergency certification for mass DOT. And Amy, if you don't think we need a motion, I can just do a, a roll call for acceptance if that works for you. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think that probably works. I mean, the motion makes it safe, but, uh, okay. Well, I can I then make the quick emotion that we would ex uh, accept the emergency certification request for various storm damage repairs on route 116 and route five in Deerfield from the mass DOT, uh, request dated July 25, 2023. Uh, for five locations uh, within Deerfield. And if there's a second, then we can go ahead with that. But I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm second. Okay. So the motion on the table to accept the, uh, accept my, I guess, accept my uh, signature of the emergency certification from Mass DOT. Okay. Um, oops, is that something? Oh, I was just saying to, to ratify. The... To ratify. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To ratify the emergency certification. So we'll take a roll call vote to do that ratification. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Ann Mary. Ann Mary Cloutier, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Okay. Obviously, I abstain because I, I did the signature. So that's the uh, DOT one. Um, and and uh, hearing from um, Billy the, from the District Environmental Reviewer at DOT, I expect another one pretty soon. <laughs> so we'll go through them those again. Now, the ones from town, I did want to pull these up. Um, okay. Uh, do you want me to try and pull them up on my screen? Let me just see if I can get them here. I got them. I think I can pull them up right here. See if I can do a share screen again. Host yeah. disabled. Nope, you're not letting me uh, screen share, so. Oh, right, because we, uh, yeah. let's see if I can, hold on, I can change that, all participants. Okay, so you should be able to share now if you wanna give that a try. Okay. Uh... So I'm looking at the attachments that um, Amy sent out earlier. Can you see those? Mm, no. Nope. Oh, here they come. All right. Um, so there was one of those Conway. So this is 321 Conway Road. Um, and these are all submitted. Um, by the town um so most of the work dates are we're going to stagger these a little bit because there's so much going on and we do have a 30-day window um so we have six or eight of them in today we'll do 10 or 12 more next week we'll do 10 or 12 more the week after that um just to keep the window open and some of these and talking to john this morning like there's a some some fairly large uh issues like um one up on Little Meadow Road, which is just by past the uh, DA uh, track, going up to the Old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. Good chunk of the side of the hill is wanting to return to the Deerfield River, and where that part of the Deerfield River cuts in there. Um, and within that area, there's uh, both uh, water line and sewer line, a few feet under the road, right next to the edge of the embankment. And during the flooding, the water actually went up over that road and into the cornfields. Um, and some of those, I don't know, not sure if they're going to be salvaged or not back in there. Um, and there's three or four areas in that banking that are just pretty much 
you know, a good next storm, it, we could lose a lot of the area. Um, so there are some plans for that, but I, I believe, and I haven't seen the final, but John told me this morning that the town is, uh, is starting to work with, I believe it's USDA, and they will do the overall design, emergency, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they will reach out to us, uh, the Conservation Commission, and I don't know whether that's just for a, um, a notice or you know, an emergency response to them, but they will reach out to us. They'll reach out to um, the Heritage uh, Endangered Species Area because that is an area up there that's listed by them. Um, Corps of Engineers, et cetera, they'll take care of all that. Um, and also what happens with their contract, they would do all the contracting, you know, everything up front to get all the permits in place. They do the engineering, uh, they have it done, and by federal codes, they have to be done within, say, 200 days or 220 days, something of that nature. Um, so it extends the time for us. So there's a few big projects, I believe, that the uh, town's going to decide to to utilize. Uh, and I think it's USDA. I, I, I missed that note this morning, but I think that's what John told me. Um, so various things going on, but these are all ones from this from the town. Um, the first one we're going to look at here is 321 Conway Road, which is on 116. It's right at the base of the hill. So you can start to go up into Conway. There's a driveway to the left covered in that area. And over the years, um, DEP or Mass DOT has kind of been um, after us to get that cleaned up because all the rubble and everything ends up in Route 116. Um, so you have to clean, you know, clean it off or shut down the road, et cetera. So that's a cul uh, culvert repair. Um, so you can see what's, you know, the work to be allowed. And this is where you might have some questions on it. That's why I want to go through them. Um, so it tells you what has happened. Debris coming across 116. It's an old failing metal culvert under the driveway. Um, it the rain, uh, creates a public safety emergency. So they want to remove the collapse, collapsing metal 12 inch culvert, replace with a 24 inch uh, culvert and backfill. Um, the wording I like here is the wording I gave to John. I said, you know, work to be performed in the immediate areas only. And he added within five feet or above or below the culvert. So I don't want to have people take advantage of the emergency response things to, and we'll talk about some other projects in just a minute to expand upon what might be necessary because this is the only emergency response so take care of the situation now if they ever wanted to do more up there with some kind of retention area whatever they have to come to us with the noi but this is an emergency response so i thought this was a, a pretty good one and um we don't have to ratify these tonight because i haven't signed off on anything so this is just a general discussion Okay, I haven't signed any of um, the ones from town because we just started receiving them this afternoon. Um, the general conditions are the same. I just talked about, you know, four, six, seven, especially uh, the timing of what can be done. Uh, we can put in special conditions, uh, work to be performed in the immediate areas only re with respect to replacement. So that's kind of the, some of the language I put in with that. Um, you have all of these. Take a look at them. If you have any, you know, concerns, let me know because I I'm sure. Actually, 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 I have 24 hours to sign these. Um, so, Sean, you have a question? Sorry. I did. Uh, am I to understand that all the emergency certifications are for replacement in kind? meaning an 18 inch culvert gets replaced with an 18 inch culvert or are they allowing work that, you know, moves up a culvert from an 18 to a 24 or. Yeah. How is so that with, being determined and can we not like keep making the same mistake by just putting in more yeah. undersized culverts? It's a great question. So by us doing it in the town, by me signing off all this, it allows for, you know, going from a 16 to a 24 if we gave it over to the DEP, because there's also, they could do this if I asked them to, and you know, gave up our rights, 
then they would have to do it in kind. They could only switch an 18 for an 18 or 30 for a 30. Um, but there's so many undersized culverts in town. This is an opportunity for the town in the emergencies, working with the DPW and, and working with um, construction firms like Morawski and, and Davenport, whatever, you know, things to, to uh, improve. And the other big issue down the road, which I will address again and again and again, I mention it every day uh, out there and I'll address it again with the select board. But most of these, you look at a lot of these culverts and some of them are now three quarters full of stuff before it even rained. You know, the O&M is just not occurring here. Um, so um, we can't do that in an emergency order, but if they come back with NOI on different things, then we might wanna put some teeth into it with, with O&M. Uh, and put some scheduling and timing on it as a lot of this could be avoided. Uh, I you know, was telling the guys when I was out there, I said, yeah, you got to keep up with this or else we're going to be back here in six months doing the same thing. <laughs> you know? So, um, so that was Conway road, um, Keats road. Let's see. That was, um, oh yeah. just a brook within 10 feet of the resident just, it was a river on that Friday, took out a bunch of the banks uh, and foundation deck, open basement, flooded. Um, so the work thing is to restore the original stream bed back to the original location, place protective material back in original location and protect structure for, by um, storming stream banks. Um, work to be formed the media areas only. Um, you know, protecting existing residents, restoring uh, stream banks. So this is kind of the wording that I had them put in of work within the areas only. I don't know, like in this one, it's a little bit ambiguous. Um, and you'll see some other ones which are a little bit better, but you know, it says place protective material. Do we want definitions on what that material is? Uh, do we want um, protect the structure by restorming, you know, how do you restorm the banks? It's kind of, kind of almost straightforward stuff, but, uh, you know, rip wraps and, um, at times I, I think I'd like to put in some, and you can't really, you could do it in emergency, but, you know, getting some, uh, vegetation planted so we can get some roots in there and stuff of that nature. Um, the one on little metal road, we talked about, uh, root wads, uh, that they're going to put, put in there. And that's great because that'll just help hold that bank in longer term. But as you read through these, and like I said, I got to sign off on them tomorrow. So um, by the end of today, uh, end of the day, officially, you know, John's going to give me some time. And I've already talked to Mark to give me some time, but I pretty much need it tomorrow over the weekend. I'm going to have to sign off. So if anybody has any real issues, as you read through these, you know, later, let me know and we can go back and start to rework it. But I think as I read through most of this afternoon and I've been working with um, Chief Pachorik quite constantly over the last few days that um, I think we're you know, reasonable for emergency response, but certainly want all your inputs and, and feel free. Um, third one here is Deerfield Academy, um, South Division Field Culvert, uh, this is a culvert that's on the west side of Mill Village Road at that lower um, entrance to the fields, the one with the gate on it said you can't come in. Um, so when you come across the wetlands from Richardson, you come across there, um, there's a stream bed that comes, it goes underneath where they did the bridge work on Mill Village last year. And it goes out into a wetlands and it takes a sharp right hand turn underneath that road and goes out. Um, so it is somewhat on Deerfield land, but what happens is it gets backed up, it's undersized, and all the water backs up and goes over Mill Village Road and becomes a you know emergency response. So that's how they um, you know kind of say that it's a you know a public means and stuff. So this would be just replace the existing 40 inch culvert, which actually was out there this morning um, to take a look at it. And they want to go to 60 to 72. Um, that culvert on the front side is, it was originally 40 inches, it's 
halfway caved over to this and done that um and so forth so um only impact is the stream it's going to be right underneath the the road I mean nothing up or up or uh, above or below it and right in the immediate area um to replace the bottleneck so i think you're kind of getting the uh, the gist of all of these uh, there's a couple other ones that are oh here's lower road you all probably saw lower road on the news and if, i don't know if anybody rode out there but i'm out there a couple of times and uh i took mark stinson out there and he was like oh my god it is a big chunk of road totally gone <laughs> I just went down the brook. Um, so it, it's, um, I forget what the, um, 30 feet in length cross, 24 width, 24 feet in width, and at least 15 feet down. Um, and I have a contractor in place, and I think it's, um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, Mass West construction. I think we'll start next week. So there was a 36 inch pipe down there that was in concrete. Uh, it failed. It could not hold it. Uh, the water back, there's wetlands front and back of it. Um, and it just overcut the, the pipe, took out all the materials underneath the pavement and then pushed it through. And this is where that poor woman went off the road and got stuck in her car in the brook down the way. Yeah, uh, we we're lucky that that nothing worse than that. Um, so what what the new idea is we're there, initially we we're going to put two 48 coverts on top of the 36 because that 36 cover is not is in good shape. Um, but I think what the new design is is to go with a new head wall and a 60 to 72 inch culvert um, backfill and repave the road, um, you know, kind of as quick as possible <laughs> so that was a biggie um whopping road is amazing i don't know if anybody okay you might have, might have driven down there i don't know it's just amazing um even after the several of the subsequent storms it got worse and worse um so what we're going to do at whopping road and at pine nook road which I think I have Pine Nook here too today. I'm going to treat them as one emergency response because um, you look here in attachment C. Um, there are five locations uh, just on Wapping Road. Um, the first location is the entire road. <laughs> um, and that's uh, roadside work. There's a swale on both sides that have all been filled in. Um, so they want permission, they've already started, but permission to clean out the swale. And I, I, again, I took Mark Stinson over there and he totally agrees with everything that we're talking about. There's a number of uh, road co coverts, crossings. Um, as soon as you go back behind the road where Richardson's uh, Candy is, um, I think Depot Road comes down the hill. There's a culvert that comes in from the well, actually, the Antonellis Farm, where we looked at the old Deerfield thing, that thing, that culvert was totally overrun, and there's sediment up to the top right now. Comes across. Those two culverts are different sizes. That goes underneath across five and ten. Um, so there's one, two, there's two or three culverts right in that little section that has to be done. And then going up the road, there's another number of uh, culvert crossings probably another seven or eight. Some of them are totally filled in right now. Some you can't really quite find. Oh, I think Kristen showed up. Oh, maybe we can get back to that. Okay. She's connecting. So we'll, we'll continue this, but we'll, uh, Kristen, just, I see you join. Oh, you're on audio. Kristen, I see you, Joe, and you're from SWCA um, talking about uh, Cumby. So we weren't quite sure if you're going to show up tonight, so we jumped ahead a little bit. Oh, sorry. I'm late. I literally just got in the door, so I'm 
I'm doing video off. Just spare you my wind blown hair and. <laughs> yeah, not a problem, but um, we we'll probably need about another 10 or 15 minutes to go over some of this emergency response stuff. And then we'll come back to you if that would be okay. Absolutely. Yep. I'll be here. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, so anyways, Wapping Road all through that area. Just culverts and culverts and cleaning and cleaning and, and, and so forth. So this is probably, you know, this is more detailed here. Uh, what size are going to go in? You know, they range from six to 28. We want to go to 24s. Um, it's all here, pretty much outline of, of work to be allowed there on Wapping Road. So you guys can read through all of those. Um, and then the same, I think we have for, did he, did, uh, let's see. Pine Nook Road. Um, and, 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 and see the attachment. See, Pine Nook Road is Wapping Road uh, on steroids. Um, it was up there a few times, and it is just the road is. I mean, it's, it can be passable right now. They got it back together, but the road is is pretty much gone. Um, the town you know, is looking for a long, long-term solution there, which would be a lot, a lot of money. Um, but, um, you know, the stream came into the road, you know, Sean, where we went up to look at the, uh, and I think Kate was there too, at the, um, the track, you know, most of the side of the road on the right-hand side is gone. And it's just wide open brook coming down through there. Um, they can't find their, what well, they were working yesterday they're trying to find a culvert at the bottom. Can't find it. So I can get the water out because <laughs> that culvert's all filled in with debris. Uh, and then going up the hill to the flats, um, just, you know, a few days later, they were still working in three to four feet of water that was just standing up on top. Um, the track was pretty good. Uh, all that erosion control held really well. And, it made like a big pond where it held all the water. And so nothing kind of went over either place. Um, so that one was good. Um, but you can see six uh, locations. I'm surprised there's only six, but, um, you know, roadway work, entire road. Um, numerous cross culverts, uh, stream bed where the stream bed came out of its initial bed and came underneath the road. Um, so they're gonna have to shore up the road. And there's also, a, a, you know, there's water mains hanging out there now. There's electrical conduits just hanging out here and there. Um, to kind of redo that and then move the stream back into the original area, keeping the original substrates and, and you know, the original channeling and not, you know, channeling it straight and any of that nature. Um, but this was a, um, this was just quite something up there. Um, if, you know, if anybody wants to see it, you can say you're with the commission um, or, you know, ask John or whatever or we can go up through. I think the police is still closed off that road. They might still be at five and 10. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's quite a thing. I, I think, you know, it could be a, a tens of millions of dollars uh, final uh, solution up there for, half a dirt road, but that's that. And I don't think, Amy, we got in anything further this afternoon, which uh, this yeah. is, this yeah. was a lot of work to get all these together. So um, yeah. that's kind of like where we're at on these, um, you know, by legislation, by regs, I do, I have 24 hours to sign off and then they can appeal to DEP, but you know, we're fine. You know, take some time to look at them. If you have any questions, if you don't think they're strict enough or you have some other concerns, if you want to look at any other areas, just let me know. But I have looked at um, a lot of these sites. I still got mud all over my truck. Um, um, so I, I think we're you know pretty good on that, but yeah. Um, do you want me to send our erosion control measures out? I mean, is that something that you want them to take into consideration? I have a little document. I don't know if that's appropriate for this. 
Well, has to, the work has to be done unless they get an extension. And, and Pine Nook may be one. They go with the USDA. I don't know. Um, that'll give them 200 days. Um, I really don't think so because it's just it's yeah, an so emergency stuff. <laughs> okay. And, um, you know, they're just going to have to work. And Mary, did you have a question, comment? I just wanted to, I attended a FERCOG uh, seminar and, you know, between the increased moisture and the knotweed that you mentioned earlier, it impacts also the culverts. So I just think that any chance that we have to like bulk up, uh, we might want to take it. Yeah, you know, I agree. And that's within the emergency um, certificates, we can expand. If we went with a DEP emergency permit, we'd have to put it back in place. Um, so just about every culvert I know of, and I've seen a lot of them in Deerfield, are really undersized. Um, so if we can do that kind of on our own bit by bit, you know, maybe in the next 10 years or so we can get there. Um, but then the, the overall O&M is going to be an issue. And there's some other areas, not just in north part of Deerfield, uh, Grave Street, uh, backside of Grave Street is still closed. Um, that was a covert overrun and both sides of the road caved in uh, a little bit of section in the middle still there uh, but that's going to have to be a total rebuild of, of several culverts and there's a couple laterals that come into it um, like i said i don't have john's complete list in front of me um, but they're just um, there's a lot so I think we do have over 45 identified right now. Um, I think we just went through about eight emergency certificate responses. Some of them, two of them, including just entire roads. Um, but I do expect we'll probably see upwards of a couple dozen more emergency certificates in um, over the next week or two. And what we'll do, Amy will send them out, everybody. Um, I will basically sign off and, and comment on them if I need to. Um, but, you know, I've worked with Kevin and John quite a bit over the last week and a half, two weeks, um, getting an idea of what we want in them. So, but if I see them off, I'll comment, I'll sign them. They go through. DEP has an opportunity to, you know, uh, appeal if they want to. Um, and then all we need as a uh, commission is after I've signed them. So we'll have a lot. Um, would be to to ratify them at our next uh, scheduled meeting, which would be in the end of August. I think I got that right, Amy, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think that is correct. Um, I got the regs here someplace, but yeah. Yeah, yeah and I have uh, the originals that are signed by uh, Chief Pachorek. I don't know if you can come in and sign those. Um, oh, okay. I was going to ask you if you needed a hard our signature, or if we do it electronic Adobe, how, how, how would you want it? I can come in um, either tomorrow afternoon, Monday. Yeah, if it's not too much trouble, because to do it by Adobe would yeah. be to scan each one with a signature, then to prepare each one, and it's just no, uh, you got it. if you just sign. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I got to uh, be out in the morning, but let me uh, put a note that I will. And I won't have to bother you because I'll be able to get into the town hall now. So, okay. Um, okay. I probably won't be until 10. So I would say. Uh, no, it'll be in the afternoon. I have to be oh, up in okay. Shelburne in the morning. So. Okay, perfect. Um, so if anybody has a real hard part on any of these, hit me before tomorrow afternoon. Um, no, you don't, you don't have to worry about it because I'll sign them off and then you'll get a copy and then you can get back to me later and then we'll try to ratify them down the road. It's a, it's a wild process. And then if you get into agricultural exemptions and everything else that goes with it, it's like, like Mark Stinson, I need you out, buddy. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Unless anybody else has any questions on all the emergency response stuff. The weather this afternoon wasn't as bad here as I said, but might be. So thank you. Next week doesn't look too bad. Maybe we'll start to dry out a little bit. We shall see. Okay.
Well, let's uh, jump back to uh, the SWCA agenda item for request for a certificate of appliance, uh, DEP file number 1420215 uh, related to Cumberland Farms. And Kristen, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. I went through some of the, um, you know, a site visit that Sean and I did over there. I uh, went through just kind of explaining that this is to uh, looking for a certificate of completion for file number 1420215. Uh, there is another one that hangs out there, uh, 0208, uh, which I found out may have been partially completed, but not totally completed. And we will have to reach out and look at how we get that one done. And that that one has more to do with the stormwater and the um, infiltration basin. Uh, that this one only has to do with the bridge and the um, replication area. And um, that's kind of what we went through. So with that, I'll let you um, see if I uh, told the truth or not, or if you well, agreed or not. <laughs> summary. I, so I believe there was a partial certificate of compliance for the um, the order of conditions associated with the store. Um, I don't think you can issue a complete because there were technically two open orders. One was for the store yeah. and one was associated with the wetland um, restoration component and that wetland crossing, basically the driveway, <laughs> which was tied to an enforcement order. Yeah. Um, I've got the orders open right now. We So SWCA uh, on behalf of Cumbies did the two years post-construction um, wetland restoration monitoring and reporting. One thing that we, we noticed, everything is, looking great out there. We're definitely meeting our threshold for percent hydrophytic vegetation cover. Uh, all of the construction materials have been removed. There's just one thing that we noticed and there's a little bit of knotweed and it's mostly on the route five and 10 road shoulders. So I think that's technically the right of way, but it could over time. And there's actually also some purple loose stripe in the wetland. Um, but the, the loose drive could, I mean, not loose drive, uh, not weed could creep down the bank and get into the resource area. So we wanted to, and this is in the cover letter for the request for a certificate of compliance. We wanted to just float this idea past the commission if you wanted to include some kind of long term condition that allowed for um, invasive species management with, say, for example, prior notification to the commission and a uh, summary following treatment, maybe mandating that it's, well, I would recommend that if you did wanna consider that, recommending that is, um, I mean, mandating that is completed by a licensed herbicide applicator, licensed in the state of Massachusetts, um, <clears throat> that kind of thing. Um, again, up to you. And I think the other order that was partially closed did have a condition in perpetuity allow requiring the commission or giving the commission i think the authority to request maintenance reports on the stormwater management system so you can you can request those whenever you want i don't think you need to actually add anything new but you you're welcome to include something new in this one as well yeah and i was actually I was wondering what the fine point was whether i can include anything on uh 215 that would relate to 208 or do we go back to 208 that's only partially closed? Um, because there, we did have some discussion and um, as you know, the um, infiltration basin uh, on site um, needs to be looked at, um, look at some maintenance. I don't think we had any further reports from Sterling, I believe was doing it since 2019. Uh, and then in, uh, in one of their final reports, they did mention that it needed maintenance and upkeep. Um, so I think we want to keep that open um, as well. Um, and we can discuss with the commissioners here, we'll make sure you're done with the presentation. But um, we did talk about the, uh, the ongoing um, condition of the uh, invasive species plan, control plan. I believe in one of the NOIs, um, there was an operation and maintenance plan, and it's very succinct. It's one page, but it does include maintenance of the stormwater management facility. Mm -hmm. And then we also submitted an invasive species treatment plan. It doesn't look like we included Japanese knotweed, um, but there we can update that. If that's something that you want, um, yep. 
we're happy to whatever whatever you guys want we're happy to provide for you yeah um i think we want to uh to have that updated um to include the knotweed i didn't realize that it was not there does it have does it have the um uh loose strife included um, it does it has like okay. um, uh-huh Okay, because that we I think when we were out there the other day, we kind of noticed that was more in the base, in the bottom of the um, on that um, swale, that re replacement area. Yeah, that's in the that's in the jurisdictional wetland. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it looks like there are about fourteen species. I'm not sure why the knotweed wasn't included, but we can update that. Yeah, yeah, knotweeds everywhere. <laughs> um, okay um Kristen anything else I think that's it um okay. you know this has been going on for a long time this is a pretty old project so yeah. you know if any of the commissioners have any requests for information you I'm sure you have everything in your files but I can easily pull it up and just kind of put it on the top of your pile so if anyone has any questions or wants something close to their fingertips I'm happy to help dig that out okay that's um, great any other questions from the commissioners No. Yeah. So I think, um, Chris, I don't think we have to do any real move or decision on this tonight because I, I think we'd want to get your a updated um, inv uh, invasive species plan in place. Uh, take a look at that. And then uh, if that's good, the, um, I think everybody and, and Sean and I talked to the, uh, the rest of the commissioners before we got on that to us, it all looked like in that replacement area that everything looking good there some issues with the infiltration basin but i gotta take that up separately and i'll probably uh, now you, are you involved in that or is that sterling or is that someone else or who would i contact to follow up there my guess is it's at this point it's probably cumbies the engineer so working direct, on that, yeah. yeah cdg yeah. were the engineers but i have a feeling they're gone at this point and it's probably cumbies and they maybe have a third party coming yeah. in and doing inspections and i don't know who that is it might be on those reports that i sent though yeah it was a company that was doing the inspection it was sterling uh oh. somebody and I, I think they're out of mid-state uh worcester area i think i've run into them in the past but okay. i thought there was another company that cumbies had that you know under their name um but i couldn't qu quite find that um that so I'll, I'll reach out to them separately and see if we can address the infiltration basin but if you can get us the updated plans um we can look through that a little bit more and um you know i think we can probably then you know move ahead with this in the in the next uh month or so and, and not the next two or three years that we've been kind of holding off on this how's that that sounds great um do you have the cumby's contact information his name is dominic taverna I do not have that. Right, I'll I don't give you. Okay. Yeah, I think it's on uh, one of the NOIs. Is it on there? I'm just looking through all the yeah. paperwork yeah. here. Yeah, okay. I have. Yeah, I think he's on um, like near near the top of one of the NOIs. His name and maybe contact info is okay. there. But it certainly wouldn't hurt to get it uh, from yeah. here and send that sure. along. I have his email. I don't know if I have anything besides that, but I'll I'll provide you with that. I mean, he was technically the applicant, so that would be a good, I think, person oh, yeah. for you when you're. Yeah, when you're Dominic Taverna in Westboro. I uh, just yeah, there's no contact information here at all. Okay. Just his name. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you, and I think we'll be able to work through this. Um, any other questions from anybody else? Good luck with all the call alerts, everyone. All right. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks. See you, See you later. Bye. Thank you. Okay. So we'll get that. So she'll send us an updated plan. And like I said, I don't think there's any need to do a motion on this. We're going to just sign off on the uh, form. I don't know. We'll take it with uh, when we get some more information. We'll follow up from there. Um, just two other quick things, you know, things that just popped up in the last 48 hours, which 
everything's been popping up in the last 48 hours. Um, we had two requests in. Um, they came into Amy to the office. Um, one is a gentleman up on, uh, I think it's Steam Mill Road, um, looking to do some work on trying to hold back a little river or a brook coming, coming across. Um, he wants to reach out to us uh, to see what he can start in. Um, I believe, yeah, yeah. what did we say? We, we sent him back to probably do a... I think, yeah, we, we asked him to submit uh, an RDA. RDA on that, yeah. And he wants to build a retaining wall to keep the bank from falling into the brook and to plant. I mean, it sounds like he's trying to do the right thing. Yeah, and he seems to be working for us. So, yeah, that's the one I sent you back to note on the RDA. Uh, he should at least do that because there's a small stream going through that looking at the mass GIS. Uh, map this afternoon. <clears throat> There's no wetlands there per se, but it is up by the railroad tracks and it may may not even been determined. <clears throat> so uh, I think if we get an RDA in there, then we can look more for a, a determination and then um, see what his plans are and then, um, you know, put it with, uh, you know, different things that we, we need him to do, conditions. So that one will be forthcoming, we believe. The other one up on Greenfield Road, um, I reached out to him, Amy, the uh, email that you had listed on mm -hmm. your email, and I got it mm -hmm. sent back that it was couldn't go through. And I don't yeah. have a name of the fellow. I don't know if you could oh. send me his contact name. Yeah, it wasn't yes. in the email. It um, so I, I didn't want to call him up and say, I got his phone number. I want to say, hey, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. So if you could send me his name, I'll find out. And that's interesting. I drove by. It looks like it's just past the driveway of where Tim Hilchey lives. Like there's a little right in that corner, and there's another little road that, and that there's a parcel in there. The um, I forget the map number. It's about seven, seven point one. It's a pretty good size, but he has to put in a um, a crossing over a stream for the driveway, and he wants to know if he could start work before he got our applications in and so forth to start clearing some trees and i said no don't start anything but um i was going to be willing to go up there and i'll check with anybody else that wants to take a, a you know a quick site visit before he starts all the paperwork and see because um i believe cr with with a stream crossing um probably not within the boundaries of the wetlands but um my indication to him was that you you would need an NOI to to get going. So the other guy in RDA, so we can determine what's there or not. But um, this one looks a little bit more straightforward. But I'll take a ride over someday if I can ever get a hold of him. Yeah, yeah. I, I told I got a lot of calls on that property, and I told every single caller that you would need an NOI, including him, that he they would need an NOI to get into it. So. Yeah. 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 And I got member of the select board right next door keep an eye on me to do it right <laughs> um oh the other new item um uh, i just uh, i i reached out to damien at uh, treehouse today and kate and sean you should get copied on that email but just to you know see if we can get together we have a little subcommittee uh with kate and sean and my wife gretchen um doing um educational signage that treehouse has uh, agreed to do at their cost and within their production uh, art production area and so we're gonna start working on that and hopefully we can get to the next step so as soon as we hear back and then we'll i'll leave it all to you guys to, to run with it and uh, see what it comes out to be that's the only other new stuff I had, um, did I miss anything, Amy? I apologize a little bit, but it's just been a, a week or two of all this emergency response stuff. And kinda... Yeah, no, I, I think you've pretty much covered everything. We got yeah. this. We had yeah. no more, we didn't have any more mail, right? Nope, no mail. No. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. No, I've literally been a lot, a lot of time on emergency response. So hopefully get 
some of the stuff going and get this behind us. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any comments, anything you want me to, to look at even closer, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll try to I'll try to do my best. <laughs> um, all right. Any other topics, um, things you, anybody on the commission want to address tonight? No. Oh, just before we go to one, there was one other thing we were going to have. We had a meeting now that, that, that you mentioned rock um, a week or two ago about the zoning bylaws. And we were going to have the planning board on tonight. You might have saw that in an earlier agenda. Um, so I, I was on the call and I, I don't know. I'm not really impressed um, with FEMA and, and the information that they provide to us and so forth. So um, we almost uh, were going to get invited to do a little bit more with the floodplain stuff. But um, it's been determined that that's all on the, the planning boards purview as far as the regulations and the and the bylaws um but we are responsible for floodplains via the wpa um so our paths will cross between planning board once in a while uh give or take but for the most part we'll leave that hot potato over there for now and uh um we'll take our own thing on that so um and then the other thing that came up in that conversation which i do have to bring up uh, with either Casey or the select board is the potential option of putting together um, some conservation bylaws for the town of Deerfield. Um, so we get a little bit more strength and teeth uh, with the bylaw. Um, and it also would um, assist us from not having to go through all 75 of our predetermined conditions for every project and figure out which one's going to apply because we could probably umbrella a lot but that's something on my to-do list and i just don't know when i'm going to be able to get there but just to let you know <laughs> other than that if nobody else has anything else i'd make a motion to uh, adjourn i believe i'll make a motion to adjourn at 7 27 p.m okay. Ben Byrne, I'll second. All right. Got a motion and seconded. Um, we'll just to keep it official, do a roll call to adjourn. Sean Libby, accept the motion. Sean Libby, aye. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. And Mary. And Mary Clutie, or aye. Ben. Ben Byrne, aye. Pete Law, aye. It's a wrap, Amy.